just a few hundred miles northeast of San Francisco, high in the Sierra Nevada mountain range, lies one of nature's playgrounds. Here in the spring or fall, you can ski the slopes in the morning, play golf or swim in the afternoon. You can ride a steam train, drink beer atop a mountain, explore the depths of a mine, all while breathing clean, fresh air, marveling at the panoramic vistas, and of course, tucking into the local fair. I'm here at the California-Nevada border. Come explore Reno Tahoe with me. 100 Days Drinks, Dishes, and Destinations is brought to you by... With AMA Waterways, guests can climb, pedal, and journey beyond the beaten path while cruising on storied rivers across Europe. You can find out more at amawaterways.com. When I picture my dad, Josh, I remember his hands. Strong, they were worn, stained. That was years of hard work as a lumberjack. His commitment, work ethic, values, that's what really inspired me to create Josh Sellers. Otherworldly and down to earth. Visit Napa Valley. Come with me to stamp your passport to delicious. I'm drinks and culinary expert, Leslie Sabraco. And I'm traveling, tasting, sipping, and savoring the world to share my bucket list of palate-pleasing experiences. Cheers. On 100 Days, drinks, dishes, and destinations. Nevada, California's neighbor, takes its name from the Spanish term for snow-covered, referring, of course, to the towering Sierra Nevada range straddling both states. Even with the white-tipped mountains, Nevada ranks as the driest state in America, with less than 10 inches of rain per year. Nestled just inside the state line, Nevada's second largest gambling town rises from the valley floor. Reno is known as the biggest little city in the world. And whether you arrive by car or by plane, just know that you may feel the earth move beneath your feet. This area experiences more than a thousand earthquakes every year. And we're actually further west than Los Angeles. Sure, there are casinos and big hotels, but there are lots of hidden gems too. You can even climb the biggest climbing wall in the nation at the Whitney Peak Hotel, which is the first non-gaming hotel in Reno. Or it's family time here at McKinley Park. The pristine waters of the Truckee River are right here, and you know you're in the Sierra Nevadas when you see that flowing. So you can come here and enjoy the beautiful water, or you can just step across the road and eat with the locals. So everybody in Reno comes out for this. I mean, it really is locals who are here for a Wednesday night out. First up, Mr. Margarita. I'll just have the basic standard old margarita, man. I love it. Next up, I'm waiting for my raclette sandwich. You're just warming it up here. Warming it up, kind of like a little broiling system, and then it's a big, like, waterfall of melted cheese. This is awesome. Okay. So we got it all melted here. All right, ready? Gooey, gooey waterfall of cheese. A little bit of France right here in Reno. Mmm, bon appetit. It's the creamiest of cheeses. It's mild, but it has this saltiness, and then you put a little bit of the prosciutto in there. Ah, oh. all mine. Hungry devils, just for the hell of it. Sounds like me. Why Greek food? Tastes good. <laughs> so there are lamb farms here in Nevada where you get your lamb. Yeah, from all the lambs run up and down the Mount Rose Highway every year. That's great. These lambs have a great life and one bad day. Now I get my lamb. Oh my God, that looks great. Simply done, lamb the way it should be. I've never had a salad with chocolate covered espresso beans. I like it, I don't love it, but I like it. They're very hard to eat with a fork, I'll just tell you that. What is this now? Black garlic aioli with your fries and then a chicken tiki masala roll. Chicken tikka masala. Not fiery, but certainly has a kick to it. And being in the egg roll wrapping, is it a nice crunch? We make our chips from scratch, and then we've also won the best block at Taco Fest last two years. Excellent. But I gotta tell you, the chips are the winner. You know, everywhere you go, there's food trucks all across America. But I have to say, I didn't expect a food truck park in Reno, Nevada to be so above friends. All about young chefs doing something interesting. It's fun to be here. House-made gelato. 
them right here in Reno, Nevada. And make sure to go to Midtown, a neighborhood undergoing a renaissance. Here you can hang and have a cocktail at Rum Sugar Lime. Rum Sugar Lime, Lorenzo's gonna whip up one of his classic daiquiris. Good? That's good. Cool. Packs a punch. Yeah. Now, Reno may be glitz and glamour, but I'm going to get my cowboy boots on to get in the dirt and discover the history of this area by heading to Virginia City, Nevada, which is home to the Comstock Lode, a 19th century mining center that turned Virginia City into the most important industrial capital between Denver and San Francisco in the late 1800s. The town that remains still celebrates its glory days of old. In fact, more than a few here seem firmly stuck in the past. From juggling gunslingers to the stubborn resident mule. So with a when in Rome attitude, I embrace the Old West and begin my journey. What we call the Bonanza years, the big Bonanza years, 1859 to 1880 was the richest place on earth. One of the most popular names up here was Mark Twain. Now he wasn't Mark Twain when he came here to Virginia City, he was Samuel Clemens. But he left here as Mark Twain. He was here in total about 28 months. And you can see a facsimile of him right there, that's a $10 word. He's not as good looking as me, but still. Well, there's a lot of people think that he got his name down on the Mississippi River, but it ain't true. When he went into the saloons, he'd be running a tab in there, and he didn't want to drink alone. So he'd walk in, and he'd say, Mark Twain. Mark two drinks on that tab, because he didn't want to drink alone. Always had to have a partner, I understand that. Wow, so that's how I Mark Twain, yeah. You do get this nostalgic feel here. Well, you do, it's like stepping back in time. If you wanted to step back in time, you could dress the part. Okay. So go on in there, talk to Cindy, and I'll meet you down at the station. Alrighty. Alrighty. Hi, Cindy. Miss Leslie. Howdy. How are you? What do you think? You are just the prettiest I've seen on this mountain. You're a sight for sore <laughs> eyes. That's for You're sure. All right. Let's go take a train ride. This train ride really allows you to see the area. It's hot and dry in the summer and very, very cold in the winter. The miners suffered these horrible, harsh conditions in hopes of riches. When the gold was originally discovered, the miners started making their way up what's called Gold Canyon, and they established Gold Hill around 1859. The railroad was very, very important, and in 1869 was completed. Before that, all of the materials and ore and all had to come up and down this mountain by horse and wagon. Though it's really quite comfortable, I'm changing out of my slightly cumbersome long dress to visit the Collar Mine. It was opened up 1861. So in this mine, Deke, not this one alone, but in all around this area, how much money was pulled out of this ground? Well, just in gold, about 700 million. That's when gold was only 18 to $20 an ounce. Wow. When the gold was originally discovered, there was a bluish gray clay that was getting in the way and they just kept throwing it away. A big sample of that bluish gray clay was sent off to the assay office, come back almost pure silver. The amount of silver taken out of the ground exceeded the amount of gold, and that's why Nevada called the Silver State today. So they figured out how to build this up with timber. Yeah, now there were a lot of deaths in these mines through the years, but most of them were not because of cave-ins. It was because of fire and the miners getting tangled up in the machinery. Before electricity went in, and this was the first mine with electricity, you would have uh, candle holders, and you, and you would light the candle. Candle and wood, fire yes. and wood. 
What happened? You see there's some water around here. Well, when you get down to a certain depth, then you're going to start getting thermal water out of the ground here. And it comes in hot and it makes your air temperature can be 140 degrees. I mean, this was a hard life. Look at this. I mean, building these and being in here all day long. Absolutely. Uh, well, $4 a day. They were the highest paid miners in the world at that point. $4 a day, and at that time, you could live pretty darn well uptown. And how, how did they haul this stuff out? So when the rocks come out of the mine, they were put into the ore cars, and you would take the ore cars out, and you would uh, get them on down to the stamp mill, and then the stamp mill would make the big ones into little ones. This is an 1864 Joshua Hindi California power panner cast in San Francisco, brought up here in pieces, put together and put to work. So that could area. still run? Well, what the hell are you here for? There we go. But the material comes in, it drops into this crusher, and then drops it in the stamps on the other side. You can see those two cylinders, those are the stamps. Each one of those weigh a thousand pounds. Breaks it down talcum powder fine, and it comes out as a slurry. This is a concentrate table or a gold jig. The slurry comes across these riffles as this table shakes back and forth. Gold being heavier gathered on the backside of those riffles and scrape that stuff out, pan it out, send it to the furnace, melt it down, put it in ingots, and send it out to be refined. This is just a little two stamp. Imagine 20 stamps on that back wall, gangs of five side by side. That's it. That's, that's fascinating. Just, that's all you get. No more. That's all I get. I don't get any gold. Nope. Get nope. Nope. Gold. You're on your own. So at its peak, how many people lived here in Virginia City? Well, it fluctuated between 25 and 28,000 people, and there was only 4,500 miners. So, so that's the pretty... rest of them were servicing those miners. That's right. They were <laughs> catering to that whole lifestyle. Here we are in the Red Dog Saloon. This speaks about a whole nother history and culture. 1960s and then early 1970s come along. Psychedelic rock and roll. Well, this is where a lot of it happened, right here. Big Brother and the Holding Company played here when Janis Joplin was joining the group. Played over against that wall right there. So it was just the place to be if you were, uh, you know, in the groove and on the move. <laughs> A little city with a big history in it. Yeah, absolutely. Two completely different histories, which is so exciting. I see your gun on the table. Does that mean you're leaving me? I'm afraid it does. It ain't easy being me. So I'm on my way down to getting a shootout, and hopefully things will go my way. If meeting you was one of the last things that happened in my life, that's the way to go out. And I just want to give you a farewell. I wish you well. I wish you well. Try my best. All right. Try to stay alive. quite a blow. What's a smitten gal like me to do? With Deke dead, my time in Virginia City is over. You guys, to Deke. To Deke. To Deke. To Deke. <laughs> oh. Next stop, just south of here is a place where craft distilling meets craftsmanship. Driving south off the mountain, you come to the small town of Minden, Nevada the home of Bentley Ranch and Heritage Estate. Here, proprietor Christopher Bentley is focusing on sustainable techniques to grow grains for his unique spirits and to raise his grass-fed cattle. I met up with him at his impressive distillery housed in some of Minden's historic buildings. As a kid, you came here and played in these abandoned buildings, right? This place was a death trap. <laughs> I would these climb in the rafters. Silos. 
So was there always a desire to do something with this property? Yeah, I fell in love with it since I was a little boy. And, and honestly, it's an icon in the valley. And the first well that was drilled for the town of Minden is on site over here, well number one. And all of our water comes from the snow runoff from the Sierra Mountains. It's very crisp and clean. And what about the butter company? Yes, they used to make butter and cream and all kinds of dairy products. Today, it is our distillery. Look at this. It looks like a piece of art. So this is the Karl still. It came from Stuttgart, Germany. Right now, we're going through final distillation for gin. So we place the botanicals at the bottom of the pot. And we have a variety of gin. This, the American dry is a shout out to a classic London dry. Both of our gin and our vodka are made with oats, which gives you a very smooth, rich, silky mouthfeel. And it's not an easy grain to work with. So it took us a while to figure out how to do that. We wanted to really get uh, local plants and local botanicals to capture those. And we made distillates of each one and we mixed them and experienced and just this amazing mad scientist routine. So it goes from here then up. Yes, it goes to each of these platelets. There's 40 platelets. And each one adds or removes a quality from whatever spirit that you're distilling. This still will produce about 1,000 cases of gin in one run. The property is spotted with vintage cars. Tell me a little bit of history of this one. This one is from the White Motor Coach Company, built for the U.S. National Park System to lead tours and it is precisely what we're going to be doing with them. This originally was at the Iwani Hotel in Yosemite. Yes. This is fantastic. The handwork on this dashboard and the inside. I've never seen anything like it. This encapsulates his and his wife Camille's philosophy. It does very much. Um, you really can't go forward without knowing what came before you. One of the other things we do is raise cattle. We have grass-fed beef. We opened our own butcher shop so that we could really do high-end cuts and capture the high-end restaurant market. We also have our meats uh, locally available at the butcher shop for the community. It was flour, it was butter, now it's whiskey, vodka, beef. <laughs> we like to say everything here was processing grain and we're processing grain once more. Just in a little bit more fun of a fashion. <laughs> Later, I'll get to indulge in Bentley Heritage's specialties, but first, I'm headed west just over the mountains to the ancient, breathtaking Lake Tahoe. Surrounded by majestic natural beauty, there's just no better place to get away. And frankly, with the area's good living, plenty choose to escape here and end up staying. Just up the hill from the lake is world-renowned Squaw Valley, site of the 1960 Winter Olympics. The sporting spirit is contagious and exhausting. I'm making my way to the village with its melange of shops, spas, and eateries at the base of the mountain to meet an author and historian whose knowledge of all things Lake Tahoe and Squaw Valley is second to none. Hi, David. Hello, Leslie. How are you? Good Such to a see pleasure. You. Welcome to Thank Squaw Valley. Thank you so Valley. much. Good morning, folks. Welcome to Squaw Valley, USA, site of the eight Winter Olympic Games. So the last time I was here at Squaw, I was skiing, and now it's sunny too. It's so different, doesn't it? It does. What kind of geology is this? This is granite. This is granite. So you can start to see the lake, Lake Tahoe, behind us here. Mark Twain wrote about it extensively, and uh, he marveled at Lake Tahoe, and it, it was the lake to which he compared all others throughout his life. But no other lake in the world ever measured up to Lake Tahoe. According to Twain. Yeah, according to Twain, yeah. All right, time to get off. So here we are at the Terrace oh, Bar. thank you. There we go, I think we need a drink. Yes. Cheers. Cheers, <laughs> yes, thank you. And the views are spectacular, look at this. This area has been sculpted by glaciers within the last 10 to 20,000 years and gives the rocks this unique shape. Really surface. polished, huge polished. and polished. Yeah. To really get a good view of the lake, we need to go upstairs. This is, this is stunning. Uh, it really is spectacular. What we're looking at here is the eastern side of the Sierra Nevada. The Sierra Nevada itself is millions of years old. Rocks that are granite that's been uplifted and rocks that were laid down by old seabeds and then uplifted. Lake Tahoe itself started three to three and a half million years ago with the mountains on either side continuing to rise while the bottom of the lake fell down, creating the depression that filled with snow melt and water. 
And how deep is Lake Tahoe? Its maximum depth is 1,645 feet deep, which makes it the second deepest lake in the United States and the 11th deepest lake in the world. The surface, uh, you could fit four San Francisco's. Really? On the surface of Lake Tahoe. That's how big it is. Well, because San Francisco is seven miles by seven miles. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah, I've been coming up to Tahoe for many years, and just the crystal clear waters of Lake Tahoe, when you think of yes. how deep it is. Yes, it is one of the clearest lakes in the world. At times, you can see a white disc lower down into the water to a depth of over 70 feet. And of course, when you're near the shore, you can see the bottom very clearly, and all the pebbles and rocks. Right. Well, I'll tell you, we're getting the wind. And at altitude like this, 8,200 feet, one beer, is about yeah, good, Yes. right? A lot of water, hydration, and one beer. Cheers. Cheers. Here at High Camp, there's plenty to do in spring, summer, fall, and winter. And at the Granite Bistro Cafe, they serve up hearty meals perfect after a hike or day skiing. Wild salmon, tater tots with pulled pork, fresh salads, and regional cheeses. In terms of the Olympics, that's what Squaw Valley is so famous for. People look back on those Olympics with great fondness and, and said it was the last of the great Winter Olympics uh, because it was so small and intimate and not heavily commercialized and because there was heavy involvement by a famous person we all know about, Walt Disney, who helped plan a lot of the elaborate pageantry associated with the Olympics and it became popular and common then from then on for all Olympic Winter Games to have this elaborate pageantry associated with the opening and closing ceremonies. So this is the museum? Yes, this is uh, one of three locations in the area where Olympic artifacts and memorabilia is on display. The gold! This is the uh, Olympic Park that shows the competition venues. It also shows the avenue of the athletes where you would walk in and there were very large sculptures that were made by Walt Disney's people. The United States won the gold medal for hockey in 1960 and that was the first gold medal. It was not 1980 as most people think. Oh, the miracle. Oh, miracle nice, on right. ice. This is called the forgotten miracle. And you wrote a book on the 1960 Olympics. Yes. How did Tiny Squaw Valley get the Olympic Games in 1960? It's a, a really good story. Alex Cushing read in the Chronicle that Reno, Nevada was going to submit a bid for the 1960 Olympics. And he thought, well, heck, I can do better than that. And through lobbying, publicity, and other techniques, he was able to secure the Olympics, much to everybody's surprise. Now, we see a lot of snow here right now, but we are in sunny California, right? Yeah, that was one thing Alex Cushing had to overcome because people would not believe that it snowed in California. And he wowed them by telling them that Squaw Valley got 400 inches a year. Well, now that I'm fully educated in the history of the area, I'm heading back to Tahoe City to satisfy my longing for that Minden booze and grass-fed beef. And across from the lake, Fat Cat is just the spot. So tell me a little bit about Fat Cat. Everything on our menu is local. We make everything in-house. We're close to San Francisco, right. and there's a huge trend of knowing farm to fork and the, the philosophies behind right. that. And I think in these day and age, everybody wants to know where their food comes from. Right. Yeah. And their drinks. And their drinks. <laughs> our exactly. source one vodka martini is absolutely fantastic. Can I get you one? I would love that. OK. All right. Cheers. Cheers. Mm. That is good. Isn't that fresh? Delicious. That is so pristine. Cocktails aside, I'm really here for the meat. I am a Midwestern girl at heart. Oh, I some for oh, you to try. oh look so at this, this, chef. Is our lamb burger. Then this is our mac and cheese burger. That is decadent. Whose yeah. uh, idea was this? This was mine. Is there it's, bacon in the mac and cheese? Yes, there's applewood bacon, there's fresh mushrooms, <laughs> and then over the Bentley Ranch beef, it's just, it's, it's fantastic. That is hedonism at its best. I mean, it's dripping on my hands. So your sign out front says 100% grass-fed beef. That's true. Why did you make that choice? It's a four cycle process with all beef. And what Bentley does is compost. The compost turns into alfalfa. And then the cows eat the alfalfa. And everything is all recycled the way we're supposed to eat food. So the whole process of getting everything served locally to how we prepare it, 
to the fresh ketchup. It's all what makes us a hit. Whoa. That's a lamb burger. You know, lamb, it can be very gamey and earthy. This has a, a, a peppery kick to it and a touch of earthy gaminess that melds so beautifully with the spicy kick of the, of the pepper sauce and the gooey cheese. That was a good burger, too. We call that a layered burger. These are not easy burgers to eat. I just want to point out, plan on making a mess. That's your ultimate experience. And then if it spills all over you, you just lick it off. You lick it off, that's right. <laughs> that's the way you do it in Chicago. You get every bite you can, you know? <laughs> I have been coming to the Sierra Nevadas for decades. And not only is history preserved, but nature is revered here. What's exciting to me, though, is this renaissance of eating and drinking locally and how it's all, and regionally, and how it's all intertwined. Oh, I have to say, I have learned a lot. Here's to deliciousness. 100 Days Drinks, Dishes, and Destinations is brought to you by... With Ama Waterways, guests can climb, pedal, and journey beyond the beaten path while cruising on storied rivers across Europe. You can find out more at amawaterways.com. When I picture my dad, Josh, I remember his hands. Strong, they were worn, stained. That was years of hard work as a lumberjack. His commitment, work ethic, values, that's what really inspired me to create Josh Sellers. Otherworldly and down to earth, visit Napa Valley. For more information on all episodes, along with our expanded digital series, including behind-the-scenes footage and stories, and links to follow me on Facebook and Instagram, go to 100DaysDrinksDishesDestinations.com. We well, actually, it's fairly original, just really? kept in really great condition. Oh, look at that. Yeah. Oh, look. How do you get in here? Actually, I think I opened the wrong door. <laughs> is, that, is that nice? Delicious. <laughs>